Welcome to the Burden and Blessing Podcast, a study and discussion forum on the truth of God's Word. Our Word of the Week takes an in-depth look at important Bible words so we might increase and deepen our understanding of God's Word of Truth. We pray that these brief studies will enable you to get more out of your daily reading and hearing of God's Holy Word. Welcome back to Burden and Blessing on this Ash Wednesday and to our Word of the Week. On this day as we begin the season of Lent, we are going to take a look at the phrase or the title for this day, Ash Wednesday. The name of the day receives its name from the use of ashes in the early church, either upon the heads or the foreheads of Christians, as a sign of their humility before God. While in our modern world, many times people see this practice, as it is continued today, as being Catholic in nature, by that I mean Roman Catholic, we actually find that this is a rite that was used throughout church history and is still found even today in many Lutheran churches. And so today for our Word of the Week, we are going to consider the practice of the imposition of ashes, its meaning, its symbolism, and the benefit of it still today. On this day of Ash Wednesday, the church begins a holy season of prayerful and penitential reflection. Our attention is directed to the holy sufferings and death of our Lord Jesus Christ. From ancient times, the season of Lent has been kept as a time of special devotion, self-denial, and humble repentance, which is born out of a faithful heart that dwells confidently in his word and draws from it life and hope. The sad thing was that as, as time went on, repentance came to be understood as something people must do to earn God's forgiveness. Christians began to try to show how guilty and penitent they were. Fasting became a rule, as did other acts in order to earn God's forgiveness. People dressed in sackcloth when they came to worship on the first day of Lent, and when they left the service, they poured ashes on their heads, and that's where we get the name Ash Wednesday. Later on, ashes as a sign of our repentance and mortality were no longer dumped over worshippers' heads, but were placed on their foreheads. For many, this became just a ritual, because they had forgotten that other time when they were marked on their forehead, and that was at their baptism. Ever since your baptism, you have a mark on your forehead, the sign of belonging to God's family, the body of Christ, the church. It is the sign of the cross of Jesus, who died to free you from the guilt of sin and the curse of death, and who rose again to life to grant you life eternal. When Christians use ashes on Ash Wednesday, it isn't to show how miserable we can make ourselves look, but rather to remind us that our repentance and forgiveness is based on our baptism, as is our resurrection from the dead. Therefore, when we are marked with ashes on Ash Wednesday, the ashes are made in the sign of the cross. This makes the visible sign of the cross traced on our foreheads at baptism visible. We remind ourselves and others that our repentance is acceptable to God, not because we feel so guilty or because we have repented so fervently, but because Jesus Christ died on the cross for us. Then Lent, which corresponds to the season of spring, it regains its proper meaning of renewal and anticipation of Easter, our Lord's resurrection, and ours. So what happens after you leave Ash Wednesday with those ashes on your forehead? The first thing that happens is that you go out into the world where others will see that cross on your forehead. Although reactions may vary, your silent witness has been given. You have been marked as one redeemed by Christ the Crucified. But the other thing that happens is that you will eventually go home and wash those dirty ashes off your face once and for all. And doesn't that water also become a concrete reminder of the water of your baptism, where your sins were washed away forever? God's grace abounds. And so, people of God receive on their head, in ashes, the sign of the cross, the symbol of our mortality, a symbol of the cost of sin, and yet the sign of our salvation and the promise of eternal life. During the imposition of ashes, we hear those words, Remember that you are dust, and to dust 
you shall return. And so on this Ash Wednesday, as we meditate on our sinfulness and our need for a Savior, go in peace. Remember that you are but dust and ashes and unworthy of being called the children of God. But also remember that God, by His love and grace, has brought you out of the darkness of sin and into His glorious light. He has made you His own special people. Go forth and thankfully proclaim His praises to the world. We encourage you to listen for a new word each week on Burden and Blessing Podcast where we believe and confess that every word of God is true. Until next week, be assured that God's word is truth and is more precious than gold.